What's going on, dudes and dudettes? So all indications pointed to J.J. Redick earlier this week being the Lakers head coach, and they were going to zero in on him and focus on him being the next head coach. He was a front runner from multiple sources out there and stuff, but then they also did put out like a couple of his staff people, which looked pretty good. A lot of ex main head coaches like a Scott Brooks is added to the list, which is cool. Obviously the same guys like James Brago, Sam Cassell, Rajon Rondo, Jared Dudley were also added in there. That could be assistance, even some other ex Lakers personnel guy. But either way, I thought it could have worked out, but wake up this Thursday morning and have some pretty big breaking news when it comes to the Lakers head coaching search that nobody had ever really talked about, but it looks like they are going to be going full pork, full core press on UConn's head coach, Dan Hurley, who obviously has been the best head coach in college basketball, winning the last two national championships with UConn. But yeah, I don't think anybody ever thought he'd make the, make the jump to the NBA, especially right now with the LA Lakers, because he always just seemed like an East Coast type of guy. But I don't know, money talks, and obviously the Lakers have said they're going to put out a massive offer, which everybody seems now to be getting $10 plus million plus per contract or per year for their contract as a now head coach in the NBA, so it looks like he will be heading towards that way too, and probably like a long-term deal as well, probably have a lot more say when it comes to who his assistants are, so I like how some of those assistants could still join him. But maybe he has some other guys. Maybe he'll most likely bring some people from UConn as well. It's a tough situation for that school, but this will be some big-time major breaking news for the L.A. Lakers if they can land a head coach like this to hopefully steer not only this team right now, this elderly team of the Lakers, but also a future team of the Lakers as long as he sticks around and be able to help get some of those other younger players going like an Austin Reeves or Rui Hachimura, Max Christie it looks like they're going to try to bring him back as a restricted free agent too even though he hasn't done much on the basketball court but that was probably because of Darvin Ham too holding him back but it also points to a good thing for that what I heard from supposedly the Lakers reporting that they are still willing to take Brownie James in the draft, but a lot of talk last week was them using that 17th pick in the first round for him, but now it looks like they're set on using that second round pick at number 55 overall on him officially, but maybe they could also use that pick to move up at some point in the draft to draft him a little bit higher because he is technically moving up mock trades and all that stuff, but for him, a guy like Bronny James who still needs work, still needs time to develop and work on his game to be coached by one of the better coaches that does that, especially one of the better staffs if he ends up bringing a lot of those UConn staffers as well. And I think the sky's the limit for Bronny James and his future if the Lakers do end up drafting him in that second round. If they do it in the first round, it's like, it's crazy because I'm pretty sure Hurley would probably want a guy from UConn if they last that long or if the Lakers are within striking distance of moving up a little bit or even like a guy like Zach Eady because he his offense pretty much is like the triangle so if you have a very talented center it works out pretty good so that could also be an option there but a lot of moving parts here a lot of breaking news hopefully to happen by this week and if not then hopefully soon after that for the LA Lakers but definitely looking forward to this situation coming to life. And a lot of Duke recruiting update news on their football team. So they were able to get a 2025 three-star linebacker in Elliott Shaper. And they also got a 2025 running back in Javen Gordon and the New Mexico State running back transfer star Thomas ended up transferring to Duke as well over the last weekend. So yeah, overall, some big time gets for them. I don't know the ranking of that 2025 running back but maybe he's still pretty good to still get recruited by Manny Diaz but that three-star linebacker looked pretty good as well definitely looked better than his three-star ranking so a lot of good diamonds in the rough hopefully for this Duke Blue Devils team and that star Thomas running back he had like over 1100 yards total yards and 14 total touchdowns the past two seasons at New Mexico State so if he can do it there he can most likely do it 
in the ACC as well. So looking forward to those guys joining the team in the near future. And then I believe their name is the Field of 68 recently put out a top 10 of the most underrated players who are transferring in college basketball. And they have Duke Sion James ranked number four on their list. So it's pretty obvious that this guy is a very talented player, even though it's from a place like Field of 68. They know some of their stuff. So it's not like they're one of the big brand names like a PFF or On3 or ESPN, whatever. But I still like what they put out. So I'm trusting them. In this case, and I know John Shire, the Duke head coach, recently talked glowingly about Sion as well. So hoping for the best with this transfer from Tulane. And yes, the finals are happening tonight in the NBA. So looking forward to that. I have a prior engagement, but hopefully I'll be able to catch some of the game, whether it's there or hopefully after the event as well. But yeah, Jason Tatum, obviously the ex-Duke player for the Celtics is... I know Emil Jefferson is there on the coaching staff, but he's pretty much the main reason why I would be pulling for him to have a great performance against Dallas, but end up losing the games ultimately. But either way, yeah, he's been pretty hot coming into these finals, even though it kind of might not seem as it is, but he's throwing up some pretty big numbers as well. I think they said there was a nice stat out there that he has the most playoff points in his first seven seasons, just right over Larry Bird and Michael Jordan, which is nice. And then he's also been averaging 30-plus points, 10-plus rebounds, and six assists as well on their way. I think he did that alone in the Eastern Conference Finals. And at times, it didn't seem like it. And even Jalen Brown got the Eastern Conference MVP, even though it probably should have went to Tatum. But hopefully that motivates him to have some pretty big 40 plus maybe a 50 point game here in the finals and maybe they could win that game I guess but I'm still kind of taking Dallas here in the finals I have them winning four to two and I always prefer when basketball goes a bit longer especially when it comes to the finals so I'm hoping for a game seven no matter what but yeah I have the Dallas shirt on right now Luca's number but yeah right now I'm kind of fixated on 4-2 Dallas and hopefully if not that then 4-3 Dallas too <clears throat> in the game seven so yeah and still have Kyrie Irving and Derek Lively the second the rookie for Dallas to root for as Duke guys so yeah either way always hoping for a big time matchup and this is definitely one of the bigger time matchups in the finals so hopefully a lot of people will be tuning in for them because these are definitely some of the better teams out there in the NBA so looking forward to this and like I said hopefully Dallas will be able to close it out over those Boston Celtics yes thanks for watching people like subscribe comment down below let me know what y'all think have a great rest of your day bye